Greetings all! With the recent release of the Anbenic RG35XXSP, it got me wondering what other clamshell gaming options are out there, and one of the big ones I found was the Power Kitty V90. Now right off the bat, I gotta say that it is not going to outperform the SP, but I could find the V90 for $28 plus shipping to the US on AliExpress, whereas the SP is going for around $65. That is almost a $40 price difference, so the question arises, is the SP really worth that much more? Watch on to find out. Before we begin, just a quick disclaimer though. This comparison is based off research and the feedback that the top hands-on reviewers had of these devices. I would love to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I'm just not able to afford these units at this stage yet. I will leave links to the videos I base my opinion on in the description if you want to check them out. Hopefully, you will find some value from this content as I do endeavor to properly research these topics before I make my videos. If you do enjoy it, please remember to like and sub as it really helps the channel out and can one day maybe get me to a place where I can do actual hands-on reviews of these. With that said, let's look at the specs on these two devices. The Anbenic RG35XXSP packs a punch with its powerful 1.5GHz H700 chipset. Featuring a dual-core Mali G31 MP2 GPU, it boasts a generous 1GB of RAM and a whopping 3300mAh battery, ensuring extended gaming sessions. The SP has a 3.5 inch screen that has a resolution of 640x480 and for what I've seen, games look really nice on it. On the other hand, the PowerKitty V90 is an extremely entry level unit, sporting an all winner F1C100S CPU running at 700MHz. It only has 32MB of integrated RAM and it also only has a 1000mAh battery. It has a 3 inch display with a resolution of 320x240, so it will not be able to scale as much as the SP. The V90 also comes with very basic firmware that from reports does not even support the use of the shoulder trigger buttons. To enable these you would have to install custom firmware from MIU. Now most of the systems the V90 runs do not need these, but if you want to play the few PS1 games that you can play on this device, you have to flash the custom firmware. I will leave a link to the custom firmware installation guide in the description if you need this. On the other hand, the SP comes with Anbenic's own firmware, which is pretty capable and will run right out of the box for everything you want to play on it. Another difference that I also have to note is that the SP has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability and the option to output your screen. These are features the V90 does not have. So in the specs department, the SP trashes the V90. But just a reminder, the SP is almost $40 more, so you are paying a premium for the extra performance and functionality. Before we draw conclusions here though, let's look at the design and ergonomics of the units. When it comes to design, both units take their inspiration from the iconic Game Boy Advance SP, featuring a clamshell form factor that evokes nostalgia. The SP has a slightly larger size than the GBA SP. Some might not like this, but most reviewers loved the increased size and noted that it was more comfortable to play and hold. The buttons and the D-pad have been praised for their clicky tactile feel although some users may find the audible feedback a bit too pronounced. The PowerKitty V90 on the other hand seems roughly the same size as the original Game Boy SP, maybe slightly smaller from the review videos I've seen. Another advantage of the Anbenic SP screen is that it does tilt back past 180 degrees, whereas the V90 can't. This is something reviewers found surprisingly pleasing as it offered a unique way to play the device. When it comes to performance, both handouts are designed to deliver a rich retro gaming experience, but their performance capabilities vary greatly. The Anbenic RG35XXSP excels at emulating classic systems up to PlayStation 1, with some demanding titles from the Dreamcast and Nintendo 64 era running with occasional frame skips. So it does a lot more than the original Game Boy SP ever could. If you're a purist, that may make this device a no-no for you, but personally, I think being able to play the likes of Soul Calibur on a form factor that you loved is a definite positive. The PowerKitty V90 on the other hand shines when it comes to delivering a nostalgic Game Boy and Game Boy Color experience. It apparently plays Sega Genesis games brilliantly as well, but struggles with SNES. Unfortunately, games from that system seems to be borderline unplayable on the V90. As mentioned before, it's possible to play some basic PS1 games on the V90, but you will have to install the previously mentioned custom firmware for that, and even then, heavier 3D titles will probably not be playable. N64 and Dreamcast games are not in the realm of possibility for this unit. So, considering all the before mentioned, what is my verdict? 
is the Anbernic RG356SB worth the extra $40 that you would pay for it over the V90? My answer, yes. <laughs> the SB just offers infinitely more value that justifies the extra cost. The ability to play awesome 3D systems like Dreamcast and N64 titles on a form factor that you loved justifies the extra moolah in my opinion. Add to that the fact that the firmware on the SP is much more developed and ready to go right out of the box, and that it has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and the ability to output to a larger screen and you have a clear winner. The V90 is definitely not to be discarded though, especially at the price point it is available for recently. If all you're looking to do is have a throwback to the days when you were playing the Game Boy SP, the V90 will provide that experience for you at a much better price than searching up an original or reproduced Game Boy SP. So in that kind of scenario, the V90 is a better option for you due to the cheaper price. If you want to purchase either of these, I will leave links in the description below and would appreciate if you would consider using them as I receive a small affiliate commission at no cost to you and this really helps the channel out. If you want to take a more in-depth look at the RG35XXSP, check out my video on it by clicking on the link on screen now. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day and I will catch you in the next tech update.